Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Andrew Wilkow. So apparently, the Attorney General of the state of New York is a real estate value expert. I mean, after all, why else would she bring a $250 million civil fraud trial against Donald Trump, who's never been hit with this in the entire 50 years he's been in real estate here in New York City? But here's Trump earlier today, just a few blocks from where I am right now at the state court. She used this to run for governor. She failed in her attempt to run for governor. She had virtually no polling. She came back and she said, well, now I'll go back to get Trump again. And this is what we have. It's a scam. It's a sham. Just so you know, my financial statements are phenomenal. They are actually less in terms of the numbers used than the actual net worth. The actual net worth is substantially more. No bank was affected. No bank was hurt. They don't even know why they have to be involved. There was never a problem. Everything was perfect. There was no crime. The crime is against me. Just a reminder, in fact, Letitia James campaigned on if you vote for me, I will sue President Trump. Take a look. No one is above the law, including this illegitimate president. That was the plan all along. Show me the man, I'll show you the crime. It doesn't really matter. Vote for me, and I'm going to find a way to sue this man. My first guest represents South Carolina's 5th Congressional District, Representative Ralph Norman. Welcome to the program. Thanks for coming back. Glad to be with you, Andrew. Just real quick, do you want to opine on that? I mean, can you believe that? An attorney general, a candidate for the attorney general's position says, vote for me so I can use the law to go after uh, my political enemy. You know, Andrew, you wonder how some of these people get elected. I mean, New York is losing population. They're losing business. And it's for that kind of uh, crazy, idiotic thinking to go after any American. Uh, Donald Trump provided a lot of jobs. He paid a lot of taxes. And he contributed in, in a real competitive business, which I happen to be a part of. So it's just weaponization of this administration at every level. And it's affecting so many people at, at, at so many levels, and Donald Trump seems to head the, head the crew for that. I'm going to skip over Representative uh, Bowman pulling the fire alarm. We're going to deal with that a little bit later in the program. I want to talk about the big thing. That is the motion to vacate. So you have Matt Gates who says the Speaker of the House is breaking the agreement he made uh, with uh, House conservatives to become Speaker. Um, where are we? Is this real? Is Gates bluffing? I don't think he's bluffing. I mean, he was on all the news channels yesterday. It's the first I've heard that he was really going to drop it. The last time I talked to Matt, and we're good. I'm good friends with him, is, you know, at least let's talk about timing on this thing. Kevin McCarthy has, you know, he, he's done some good things. Uh, he put conservatives on rules committee. I'm one of them. On appropriations committee, he put two conservatives. Um, and we put some good bills up. A lot of them didn't pass, but the bottom line is to do it now when we've got 45 days no, to November 17th to come up with a funding uh, of all of our probes bills, which again should have been done in June or July. That's on McCarthy's uh, bucket list to make sure it happens. But be that as it is, we are where we are. And I hope he, he thinks about this and thinks about the consequences of it. Because it only takes four people to vote against or vote with him. And then it throws it into a whole new political game that I don't think ends well. But we'll see. And, you know, we over the next, I guess, a couple of days, we'll discuss it with our members of our committee and others. So what, what exactly happens? The speaker is vacated and there's a vote for another speaker that can go either McCarthy getting to 218 again. It could be McCarthy going to the Democrats to pick up some votes, which is not going to make conservatives happy. Or would there be somebody else in the Republican caucus that says, okay, now it's my turn? Those kind of things need to be ironed out. And, and the mechanics of it, Andrew, he can drop the bill. And he has 45 days to activate it, or I guess 44 days to activate it, where it, it comes to the floor, the House floor for a vote. And 
you know, it only, again, it only takes four. And a lot of people have already said they're going to they're going to vote for it. I'm not there yet because what that puts in play is putting the Democrats in control of who the Speaker of the House is. And politics, it makes strange bedfellows. I would hate to see that this speaker gave the Democrats anything. Look at what they're doing to the country. And I, I think it's a timing issue. Uh, and, you know, we've got toward the end of the year, we've got so many things to get to. So I hope hope he'll rethink actually uh, putting this on the floor. And he said he's going to do it a lot. You know, if it doesn't pass the first time, he'll keep doing it. Matt's a smart man. He's a smart guy. I hope he will hold up on this. You got a CR for 45 days. Is there a chance at the end of this that there's that Republicans get something, right? We, we get it. The Senate is uh, controlled by a thin majority of, of Democrats. And, of course, you got the president who would likely veto any budget that, you know, would be produced solely by conservatives. But can Republicans, can conservatives get something here? Because it's like, OK, well, you know, when we had we had McCarthy and we had I'm sorry, we had Ryan and McConnell with Trump, we didn't get any spending cuts. That's when Republicans controlled everything. If Democrats controlled just the House of Representatives, they would fight like like hell and they would shut down the government and blame Republicans. So can Republicans get anything, a victory anywhere in this budget fight? The only thing that gets higher spending, the Democrats aren't going to approve anything. We know whatever we send over to the Senate, they're controlled by Democrats, they're going to send it back. Now, I think the preview of coming attractions, if I had to guess, is there will be another continuing resolution, which I will vote against, to kick the can down the road to probably right before Christmas. And that's just, you couldn't run a peanut stand with how the, the purse strings are being handled over here. Now, what I really disagree with Kevin McCarthy on, there is a point in time that you're going to have to say uh, if that we're going to send over what's a more conservative plan than what the Democrats have and say, look, it's on you and stick tight to letting them have the pause and um, have the pause and in, in spending and otherwise known as a government shutdown. But we either going to have to cede our power of the purse strings to the Senate and accept everything. And the only thing we'll get is a bloated budget that's going to add to the 32 trillion in deficit uh, that every American has now and it's 25 the interest is twenty thousand dollars per second that's just not palatable that's why i think the speaker's vote uh, american people don't care who the speaker is it could be mickey mouse for all that matters they want to get this country on a firm financial footing and the only way it's going to happen is if we fight the democrats would fight and shut it down in a minute if they didn't get what they wanted so we need to send over another cr I voted for the first one because it had border control. It, it forced this administration to uh, to actively shut this border down. And it, we can't take another year and a half of this. And they're bankrupting the country in so many ways. I got to leave it there. So this is just <laughs> doom and gloom. Thanks for bringing me down, man. Representative Ralph Norman, thanks for joining us.